Junior year is when the idea of college and the college applications process suddenly becomes very real. It's possible that you're starting to feel stressed about it, especially if you're also trying to juggle a tougher course load, which is common during junior year of high school. In this video, we'll go over five important steps that you need to take over the course of your junior year to ensure that you're on track for a productive college admission season next senior fall. Before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe to College Vine's channel to be the first to see our latest videos, which cover a really wide range of college admissions topics such as essays, getting into Ivy League schools, financial aid, and much more. If you enjoy the content of this video, don't hesitate to comment or give it a like. Thank you very much. So tip number one is to start and finish standardized testing in your junior year. While it may seem too early, the ideal time to start taking the SAT or ACT is the fall of your junior year. That way you can plan for a retake in the spring if needed and hopefully get your testing out of the way before senior year, which is gonna give you a lot more time to focus on your college applications themselves. Also keep in mind that some schools might require SAT subject tests, also called SAT twos, which are hour long subject specific tests covering topics like US history or chemistry. If you already have an idea of colleges you want to attend, you wanna check their testing requirements. If you need to take SAT subject tests, it's also good to get those done before you start your senior year. The good thing about SAT subject tests is that you can take three up to three in one sitting. So it's possible to complete all of those subject test requirements in just one day. If your school doesn't specify which SAT twos to take and you aren't sure which subjects will be best for you, you might wanna check out our blog post series which breaks it down for some prospective college majors. One final thing that you should be aware of is the PSAT or the National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test. In your junior year, simply taking the PSAT could qualify you for college scholarships, so it's something that you probably want to do. Top 1% scores in your state are named semifinalists and can go on to apply for these scholarships. Top scores that don't quite make the cut for semifinalists are named commended scholars, and while they aren't eligible for those National Merit Scholarships, they are eligible for some corporate scholarships and you can list it as an honor on your application. There's also the National Achievement Scholarship Program, which is also based on PSAT scores, but is aimed specifically towards Black Americans. The bottom line is that getting a high score on your PSAT can actually earn you some serious college money. So some schools, such as the University of Alabama, for instance, even offer full-ride scholarships to national merit semifinalists. Thus, taking that PSAT and all of your testing in junior year is something you want to keep track of. Number two is to step up your extracurriculars. Junior year is really the year to upgrade your roles and engage more deeply in some of those activities. There's a handful of ways to do that, and we're going to walk through each one individually. Those ways are getting selected for a leadership role, leadership by action, founding a club, participating in contests, developing self-driven projects. Once again, let's go through each of those individually. The first one is getting selected for leadership or leadership by action. So when it comes to extracurriculars in junior year, leadership is a major thing to talk about. Taking on an existing leadership role is a great way to show your dedication to your extracurriculars. But that said, it's not always possible to get selected for a leadership role. Another way to demonstrate leadership, even if you can't get one of those formal roles, is to do so through your actions. We're going to spend some time on this one as it's one of the most flexible and thus broad ways to improve your extracurricular profile. The best way to do leadership by action is to suggest a major addition to a club and then ask permission to oversee that addition's development. Some examples include building a training or onboarding program for a community service club, finding a lower price supplier for a gardening club, or setting up a curated online research library for a debate club. If the development is a success, you can even ask for that new development to be considered a long-term part of the club, and then you could make your position as the formal head of that development a formal leadership role. But even if your addition to the club does not develop into a formal leadership position, it can still be described in the description on the Common App Activities list, which is really beneficial to you. For example, we at College Vine once had a student who was a member of the Quiz Bowl Club at their school, but lost the election for club leadership before her junior year. She still wanted to gain leadership experience, so she actually talked to the club advisor, who mentioned that one of the biggest challenges for the team was the younger members' lack of experience. She suggested the development of a Quiz Bowl crash course that would help new members learn the very basics of Quiz Bowl and to ultimately give them a roadmap for learning more on their own. Well, her crash course actually became a standard program for all new members, and because the crash course was so successful and became such a foundational part of the club, she asked the advisor to consider adding a formal director of orientation role, which she was currently filling by default. So this student successfully gained a leadership role through her initiative and her actions without a formal selection process. Another thing you might wanna think about in terms of activities is founding a club, because it's really another way to demonstrate strong leadership. You should be careful though, because founding any clubs should be done before the second semester of your junior year, 
Otherwise, it might look to colleges that you're only founding the club to impress them on their application. The only exception to this timeline is if you found a club that is a school-specific chapter of a larger organization, like Model UN, or if you found a club that's specifically designed to compete in a formal academic competition. The existence of a broader organization makes this new school chapter look more credible, and it makes it seem less like the student is only founding the group to improve their chances of college acceptance. You might also consider participating in academic competitions as something you could do in your junior year. You participate in competitions to up your extracurricular profile. There are individual fall and spring contests across all sorts of subjects, such as the Congressional App Challenge, National History Day, National Economics Challenge, or the American Foreign Service Association Essay Contest. For more ideas for these academic competitions, you can check out our blog series on high school academic competitions that are tied to specific majors that you're looking to go to in college. Lastly, you may consider developing self-driven projects. The final method is probably the most flexible, even more flexible than leadership by action. One common way to head your own project is to just raise money for a cause that you care about in your community. The caveat is that there does need to be some sort of tangible numerical accomplishment. In general, raising anything less than two to three thousand dollars doesn't hold that much admissions value. If that number feels difficult for you to achieve, you can also consider aiming for strong numerical achievements in terms of items, such as collecting and donating 850 plus pairs of gently used shoes for a local homeless shelter. Another option is to accomplish something that is tangible within your passions or interests. So that could mean really anything. A few examples are publishing a book, completing a marathon, perfecting a Lutz jump, restoring a bicycle, building a computer. The list really goes on. It could be anything that you're passionate about. Admissions officers really love to see that kind of stuff because it speaks to an authentic passion in a way that a school-sanctioned extracurricular really never can. However, if you're going to do one of these activities, you need to prioritize them over all but the most prestigious summer programs or even over conducting research with a professor that won't be published at a high level. These activities are almost always more valuable and can often be the cornerstone of a really meaningful college application essay. One final overall note about extracurriculars in your junior year. Whatever you do to improve your profile, remember to try to deepen your involvement in a club or existing interest. It's okay to do a competition that you haven't done before or to start a club for the first time in junior year, but you want to make sure that whatever you do makes sense in the context of your profile and doesn't ditch the activities that you've already been involved in. For example, if you've done a lot of STEM-related activities and want to pursue STEM in college, it'll look confusing and disingenuous if you suddenly start a theater club when you've never done it before. Remember that your application should tell a cohesive story about who you are with each step in your high school career. So approach each different aspect strategically. Another thing that you want to do in your junior year is to keep up your grades. We just spent a lot of time talking about extracurricular activities, and those are super important in the admissions process. But of course, you can never forget about grades, which are really essential as well. The more prestigious colleges might use what's called the Academic Index, or AI, as an applicant screening tool, which is basically a benchmark that indicates how strong your academics are. Factors that go into calculating the index are GPA, class rank if your school has it, and standardized test scores. Increasing your AI is the easiest way to get your application read, as more selective schools do automatically reject students who don't make their minimum AI threshold. If your grade slipped during the common sophomore slump, or if you just haven't been happy with your GPA during those first couple years of high school. Improving your grades during junior year can give you a significant admissions boost. In fact, colleges like to see what's called an upward trend, meaning that your grades actually improved over time. An upward trend really shows to them that you applied yourself, you thought carefully about what you were doing and corrected your course, and they can see that you'll be successful in long-term goals because of those tactics. Another thing to do as a junior is to visit or research colleges. It's important to get a better idea of which colleges you might actually want to attend and thus which you need to include to your list of applications. One resource you might consider is College Board's Big Future tool, which is a college search engine that allows you to input preferences like size, location, financial aid generosity, average SAT scores, etc., etc. That search engine can help you explore some good options. If you have the time and resources to go on college visits, those can be a helpful way to better understand the school's culture, both academically and socially. You might be able to do a lot of fun things when you visit a campus, like sit in on a class, eat in a dining hall, attend an extracurricular meeting, or speak with current students. If you can't go on college visits, though, that's totally okay. Many schools have ways to take a sort of virtual tour of the campus. If finances are the problem, some schools also offer diversity fly-in programs, which actually pay for you to visit the school including transportation, food, and housing for the duration of the program. We have a blog post with a list of these programs and more information to apply, so be sure to check those out. Lastly, in your junior year, you want to build strong relationships with your teachers and guidance counselor. It's important to cultivate these relationships now in your junior year because it's important from an admissions perspective. 
those individuals will be writing recommendation letters for you. And of course, it's better to actually know the person who's going to write your recommendation letter. But those relationships are also beneficial from a personal perspective, as those folks could wind up being long term mentors or contacts for you as you go into college and beyond. The best way to build a good relationship with your teacher and counselor is pretty simple. It's just to meet with them regularly. Most teachers will have time slots during the day where you can approach them for help on an assignment or go over concepts you're fuzzy on. You could improve what you did on your last test or essay. School counselors might also have designated drop-in hours where you can stop by to chat with them for really any reason. You just don't need to be shy about going to meet your teachers and counselors as they've specifically set aside time to do so and for most of them connecting directly with students is their favorite part of their job. If your teachers and counselors don't have regular office hours, you just need to be proactive in scheduling the time to meet. It's as simple as saying something like, I'd love to go over this concept as long as I still don't have a good grasp of it. Would you be willing to meet with me about that? Or for your counselor, I'd love to discuss my college list with you. Do you have some time this week? Meeting with your teachers and counselor regularly will keep them in the loop of your goals, allowing them to see you grow, that upward trend we talked about, and then they'll become invested in your journey and ultimately they'll be really excited to write that letter of recommendation for you. In terms of admissions, once again, this can help you to secure stronger letters. So one thing you should just keep in your mind junior year is that you need to ask to write those rec letters probably in the spring. You're going to want to ask two teachers from different disciplines, like one math teacher and one history teacher. So the STEM discipline and the more humanities or social sciences. You want to ask teachers who know you well and can speak positively of your intellectual and personal qualities. It's also best if you've had these teachers recently, ideally junior year, and have formed a close relationship with them like we were just talking about. To beat the rush, you should ask your teachers if they'd be willing to write a rec in the spring of your junior year. This gives them the whole summer to write that letter. That's three months where they have a bunch of time to write an awesome piece of writing demonstrating your qualities. Also, their attention won't be divided by other schoolwork during the summer. So in conclusion, we hope that this junior year checklist gave you a better sense of what to expect as a junior you think ahead for your senior fall of college admissions. If you have any questions about this video, please feel free to leave them in the comments and also subscribe for our regular videos on preparing for the college applications process. Best of luck in your junior year.